Praise the Lord as we have come into the presence of God this morning. Let's believe that the Lord has a message for each one of us because God is alive and he is working in each one of our lives. Amen. And so today's message is, it is time to break camp and move on. Deuteronomy 1 verse 6 to 8 and 11. When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, You have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev and the coastal plain. Go to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon and all the way to great Euphrates River. Look, I am giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it, for it is the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and to all their descendants. And may the Lord, the God of your ancestors, multiply you thousand times more and bless you as he promised. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a promise and it's a command. But when we read in Deuteronomy, it is uh, Moses is reminding Israelites of what had happened in the past. So this uh, uh, Deuteronomy begins with that reminder that God had told us when we were at Mount Sinai that we need to move on. Hallelujah. Mount Sinai was the place where they had camped and got settled. And they were so comfortable that God had to awaken them and remind them that there is a promise ahead. So you need to move on. And today, God is reminding us through this scripture that it is high time that we break camp and move on. Because this COVID has paralyzed many of us paralyzed us with fear, with uncertainty and uh, doing nothing at all. We, we, we are so conceited and we've become so, so confused in our lives and uh, uh, we uh, have got stuck in a place and we do not know where to go. So I am today speaking through the word of God that he wants us to arise. Amen. Because which we have been discouraged and want to give up. There are many at this point want to give up. And, and many have already given up. Even Pastors, many pastors have given up. Today, I want to encourage you, let us not give up. For we've camped in this place, in this COVID situation because of lockdown and uh, because of the increase in the number of cases, because of deaths, we had to be confined to our homes. But there... Uh, there seems to be a place where we've got discouraged, where we've uh, been paralyzed with fear. But God is awakening us at this moment and saying, don't sit back. It's time to break camp. It's time to arise and move and take hold of the promise. So it was a reminder uh, to the Israelites and now it is a reminder to us through the same words. And we're going to see what did the Israelites do. Are you giving up at this point or will we rise up and move? It's a question that I leave with you. Are you going to give up at this point? Are you going to be uh, defeated and uh, give up on God? And say, God doesn't care. Because uh, the pandemic may have hurt you. The pandemic may have caused a lot of grief in you. Maybe you have, you, you have lost uh, your beloved people. Maybe someone very close. Or maybe you yourself are struggling with, with the post-COVID issues. Maybe the sickness has taken a to toll in your life. But... 
are we going to give up at this point? Are we going to curse God? Because as I've been speaking earlier, that these situations come in everyone's life. This is part of the fallen world. It is not that God is sitting there and trying to put certain people through this process and, and allowing them to go through this struggle. No, God is not happy when he see people dying. God is not happy when people are sick. He is here with us and he wants us to stand up and face this challenge. It wasn't easy for the Israelites. They were too faced with challenges. And in that midst of that challenges, God is telling them arise and move on. It's, it's time. You've been here for many days. Now move. Hallelujah. Today, God is calling us to break this camp. Break camp to everything that we have made our home. Uh, and everything in which we have become conceited. Have we pitched our tent in sin? Have we pitched our tent in discouragement? Have we pitched our tent in our failures? Have we become comfortable in, uh, in our present situation? God is calling us to arise and break camp. Take that tent and move forward. Break everything that has made us comfortable and move on to take the promises God has promised. There is a promise ahead. There is a beautiful hope ahead. But if we remain where we are and we say give up, then I'm telling you we have lost it. We have lost something beautiful. And, and I'm going to explain to you why God is speaking to us, why God is encouraging us in this. Why is God uh, asking them to break camp? Because they have become unproductive and comfortable in their present situation. Now there is sickness that is taken over and I am comfortable with my sickness. Okay, this is part of uh, uh, this is part of my life. So now I have to live with it. Why do I need to live with it when I have a God who will answer my prayer? Pray by faith. Claim the word of God and receive your miracle. And after you have prayed and still you are continuing then just uh, keep continuing in your prayer and believe and receive that strength from the Lord to move on. Amen. There may be sicknesses that may remain. There may be situation that may remain in you. But now when you have prayed about it and when you ha have grown in strength, you will have the courage to face it till the end. And we will stand victorious. We will not be bitter. We will not be against God. We will not get angry. We will not get irritated because now I am with the sickness. Rather, I will turn my sickness into uh, an opportunity to share the word of God, to become more strong. And there are many such stories that I can relate who have turned their sickness, their situation, their paralytic condition in spreading the word of God. Joni Erickson, we all know her situation, she turned it around. But before that, there were times that people have been praying and praying and it was a frustrating time when those prayers did not answer. It wasn't easy for Joni Erickson to stand during those times of struggle. But she, she prayed about it and through that prayer she received strength. Beloved people, that is what I'm trying to explain to you. That there are people who receive their miracles but there are times when we have to carry that situation, that sickness and move forward. But then if we give up, then we will turn bitter. We will get conceited. We will remain and we will pitch our tent in that sickness. 
and we will die in that situation and we our end will be worse than our beginning so beloved people i want to encourage you that listen to what god is telling he if he is telling us to break this camp we need to break it and move forward but god's god called them out of egypt to advance to the promised land but now at mount sinai they have given up and are afraid to move forward they have got conceded to the law that i i bear the law and i am perfect by the law so let me die here let me be finished here because i don't want to go further i don't know what is kept ahead of me i i am so afraid i am so confused do not know what god will bring ahead of us so there is so much of conceited thoughts in their minds and they don't want to move forward but what is god's intention is that we take hold of the new ground he wants to give us the promised land amen that is the good intention of god so he is telling break camp he is not against israel saying that now uh, get up and i want you to work i want you to slog i want you to go through the troubles i want you to go through pain he is not saying that he has a plan god has a beautiful plan for all of us he has already uh, gone forth and set all things right for us what we need to do is rise up and obey and move forward so today uh, let us believe in god that he exists he is alive and he has a good and wonderful plan jeremiah 29 11 i know the plans that i have for you plans of goodness plans of prosperity and not destruction plans to give you a future and a hope beautiful word God has a plan beloved people don't give up on God he has a plan for you he has a beautiful hope and a future for you so remain in him trust him believe him when he is saying move forward when i am saying move forward i'm not saying that you know you uh, you have to get up from your house and go out into the street into the this is covid time I am not asking you to go out and do something that uh, the government has not asked us to do. We need to be wise. But what I am trying to say is the the life that we have brought ourselves into, the things that we have set our minds into. If there is so much of negativity in us, if there is so much of uh, self-pity in us, if there is so much of fear in us for for everything every step and we are doubting god we are not able to pray we are not able to read the bible we are not able to experience the presence of god we are not able to walk with god that is what i'm saying don't pitch your camp in things that will stop you from moving in spiritual things in moving towards god in moving in excellence in the presence of god god wants to help you and this message is just for you today hebrews 10 verse 23 to 25 let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for god can be trusted to keep his promise let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do but encourage one another especially now that the day of his return is drawing near amen hallelujah let us hold strong to the hope to that promise and we can always trust him he will not fail us he will not abandon us he will not uh, uh, give up on us we have to hold on to his promises his promises are true his promises will be fulfilled his promise will come to pass and we need to encourage one another we need to encourage them in love we need to strengthen them today in this pandemic many people are suffering many people are struggling how can we encourage them call them 
message them, strengthen them, pray with them, give them words of encouragement, give them the word of God. You and I can do more because we have ha had so much time during this lockdown. How much, how many times did we call our friends? How many of our relatives did we call and encourage with the word of God? How many uh, mess, uh, meditating uh, meditations that you had recorded and sent it to people? Did we do it? Because God gave us the opportunity. Did we make use of the opportunity? Or have we pitched our tent and saying, oh, nothing can happen. Now, uh, now that I'm the house, uh, nothing can happen. Have you helped your pastor in, in supporting some pastors who are in need? Have you financially given your ass uh, uh, assistance? Have we done what we could do even in our homes? Have you and I helped our people within the house, our children? Have we encouraged them? Have we taught them the Bible in this time of lockdown? What have we done during this time of lockdown? That is what I'm asking. Because we've pitched our tent and we are saying, Oh, I can't go to job. I can't do this. I can't do that. So... Let me rather sleep. And many have been sleeping. And in this time of sleeping and our, our casualness, this disease has taken over and, and claimed many lives. How many times did we pray? Today, beloved people, rise up, break this camp and move forward. God is strengthening us. First, First, I need to break camp from my fear. The very first thing that I that you and I need to do today, this very moment, is break camp from that fear. Proverbs 14 verse 27. Fear of the Lord is a life-giving fountain. It offers escape from the snares of death. I heard uh, from a pastor who was saying about COVID. Today, we fear COVID more than God. Because when, uh, when this COVID second wave came and people were instructed to stay home, wear masks, do sanitize, take vaccination, uh, many took it seriously and uh, uh, that is good, which we all need to do. And because of the, the seriousness of it and because of the, uh, the actions that we took, we are safe. And many who got infected, it's not that you were not uh, uh, serious about it, but uh, this COVID cannot be seen. So it somehow or the other has entered our homes, entered our bodies. And uh, today it may have affected somebody. Some of our people may have passed away. So there is so much of fear regarding this COVID. And even when uh, the doctors and the scientists who discovered the vaccination and they say you have to take vaccination but still maintain distance, uh, wear the mask. And, uh, and we strictly follow those instructions is because there is so much of fear for this COVID that cannot be seen because they do not know where and when it can enter your body. There is a God who is not seen, but how much do we fear him? How much of the fear of the Lord is actually leading us to the word of God, which is our instruction, which actually gives us the right direction, which gives us the right command. But do we take those things seriously as we have taken seriously the COVID and we wear masks, we take precautions. But do we take precautions with the word of God? Have we obeyed God truly and sincerely today? I want to encourage you, fear God, because the fear of the Lord will actually help us uh, defeat the enemy. The enemy is not scared because we are not afraid of God. We are afraid of the enemy. Let us carry a genuine fear. Fear doesn't mean that you need to shiver before God. You need to think that God is going to destroy me. The fear is the reverence. If I rever my God, then the devil will fear. But today I fear God, uh, sorry, I fear the devil 
and I occasionally go before God when I'm in situations. Beloved people, let us make it an habit to go before God because he is truly awesome and he can rescue me. Second, break camp from conceited ideas. Galatians 5 verse 26. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. What is conceited ideas? Conceited ideas is uh, pride that I know better than you. Today in this COVID situation, I've seen many people have become doctors. Everyone is a doctor because they think the doctors don't know much. They think the, uh, the doctors have created a vaccine that they themselves are not sure of. Whatever may be the situation out there, but you and I are not doctors. We, we because of our conceited ideas, because of the conceited idea of this world, there have been social medias that are spreading such fake news and so much of fear that people are afraid to take vaccine. Uh, even churches have had this conceited idea saying that the vaccine is triple uh, six. From where did this kind of concept come from? That vaccine which is created uh, to, uh, to create an immunity in our body to fight against the virus, how can you inject a, a chip or, a, or some numbers through that vaccine? It is impossible. We need to understand that. So uh, these are conceited ideas that I know better. I know the word of God. I know that uh, I have lived in this world. I and there is no one better than me. I have all the knowledge. And because of such conceited ideas in this world, people have perished. Because of wrong medicines, uh, wrong treatments, uh, wrong way of uh, oxygens and everything what they did by themselves because they were afraid to go to the hospitals. They were afraid of the doctors. And the churches have failed wherein they have told their believers don't take vaccine because it is triple six. It is the mark of the uh, uh, beast from all these conceited ideas because I know better. Let's come out of this church. We need to come out of this and believe the Holy Spirit. Here, Paul is encouraging uh, he, just before in uh, Galatians 5 verse 26, he's talking about the fruit of the spirit. If we have the fruit of the spirit, I'm telling you, we don't have to worry about what virus or what situation we are in. Believe me, the Lord knows how to lead us. We simply need to humble ourselves and listen. Thirdly, and we're going to move forward uh, quickly, break camp and walk in obedience. The problem with the Israelites was God gave them a promise and told, break camp and move forward. I'm going to fulfill the promise. And here is Israelites. They, uh, they broke camp and they moved and came to Kadesh Barnea. And there they're saying to Moses, let's send spies. Let's buy the land. Because I believe uh, uh, God has told, but we should have our own ideas. Again, a conceited idea. And uh, then they send the spies and the spies come back and now they are all afraid. Because the spies gave them a bad report saying there are giants, they will defeat us and God brought us here. And in every camp, in every tent, they are grumbling, complaining. God brought us here to kill us. God brought us here to, uh, to put us into trouble and what not. Today, are our tents filled with such complaints and arrogance and conceited ideas? Beloved, let's obey God. His voice is clear. And he is asking us to break camp and move forward. Amen. James 1 verse 22 to 25. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Amen. They 
got scared and they did not go and take possession of the land. What happened? 40 years they wandered. And now 40 years later, Moses is teaching them and saying, you did this and that's why we actually went 40 years. And what does Deuteronomy starting say? That it took, it would take only 11 days to reach. Amen. 11 days became 40 years. Can you believe that? Because of disobedience. Because of fear, because of conceited ideas, because of disobedience, we lose on what marvelous and wonderful life God has for us. Beloved people, I want to encourage you. Please, if God is speaking, listen. His spirit knows better than us. His spirit is leading us. He is here. He is here to lead us. So listen and obey. Today, I want to encourage you through this word. I believe that you will rise up and move forward. Trust God. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you that, Lord, through this word, you are ministering to people, O oh God. Through this word, O oh God, Lord, I believe people are going to rise up. They're going to rise up from their situation, from their sickness, from their, Lord, uh, self-conceited, Lord, ideas and plans, O oh God, Jesus. In their arrogance, O oh God, in their uh, mockery, O oh God, Father, they're going to rise up and, Lord, glorify you. I bless them today that none will be left behind, O oh God but they will take hold of the promise that you gave for all of us because there is a plan and a purpose for all our lives. And Lord, we are moving forward. Thank you, Father. Lord, in this time, many have lost their jobs. Many have lost their lives. Many are sick. Many are struggling, God. I pray that as your word reaches them, Lord, they will rise up. And Lord, they will come on their knees, look on your word of God, and Lord, move Father. We bless each one of them. I believe new jobs will open up. I believe you will open new doors for your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of us now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen and Amen. God bless you.